Thanks, Ness. You probably don't realize how special that is, because uh, <clears throat> most of you know, as Ness said, I've been on Arkansas State Parks and Tourism Commission for almost 20 years, and Ness has been on a little longer than I have. And all those 20 years that, that I've known Ness, he's never done this before. <laughs> so it's kind of special. And as I said, I've served on the commission for 20 years, and Ness and Carolyn and Gail and I have become really close friends, and I appreciate them very much. Rich, I appreciate you. And Beth, thank goodness, she just sends me notes, and I said, just keep, keep sending me notes. I listen well. <laughs> I, I'm used to it, but our <coughs> Parks and Tourism, our Parks and Tourism Commission, is, it's been an honor, as Ness can tell you too, that, that, uh, that we travel around the state, meet once a month, a couple of days a month, we have the opportunity to visit different places, and that's an opportunity that I wouldn't have had if I hadn't been on the commission. And so, I've seen, Gail and I have seen places in the state we would never have known if we hadn't been, had that privilege. It's been a, and I want to tell you this, we have the finest state park system in the country. I hope you get to visit some of our state parks. <clears throat> we, uh, you know, when I looking around this room, I didn't get a chance to visit very many people before the breakfast, but looking down at, around this room, I have a lot of friends in this room, a lot of customers, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, I can't recognize, I go around the room and talk about a lot of people in this room, I'll tell you that, but we do have some, of course, some people. I was raised in Perigal and, uh, and moved to Rector in 1972 after graduating May of Shoe. But I especially want to say something about the friends I've got from Rector that's here this morning. Sherlyn Barbara Hamilton, strong supporters of ASU, are here this morning. Bill Marlo Carter from Nashville, Tennessee. Bill was raised in Rector, good friends, and, and is, most of you probably know this, Bill's responsible for the Johnny Cash concert we've had in raising money for the, for the home place of Johnny Cash. Uh, Stephen Lark Sigsby are here, good friends and supporters. Neil Krausen, Neil's from Rector, him and Pam both, and they're here this morning. One more couple, and I've got a lot of people, like, like I said, I, I don't want to miss anybody, but Dr. Asa Crow and Wanda from Perigold, been family friends for a long time, and uh, I appreciate them very much. I have some very special people here with us this morning that are very special in my life, and that's my family. I'm very proud of it. I want to introduce my, my, my family. If you would, Stan Kirk, my son Kirk, his wife Leah, Granddaughter, Lindsay, and Lawson. My son, Todd, his wife, Christy, and grandchildren, Lauren, Max, and Ellie. That's my family. <laughs> the people that know us know that uh, we're a very close family, and we're all, we all live in Rector. Kirk and Todd are both involved in the leaderships. <clears throat> and they have a game today, but the boys, they coach the sixth grade football team that Max plays on, so they're going to have to leave. Apologize that after this. But anyway, they're playing the record, playing Truman at about 11.30, so they have a game this, after, this uh, morning. After graduating from ASU in 72, I put my degree right to work. I went to work for my late father-in-law, Glenn Sane, at the GMC dealership in Rector. I washed cars for about two years. And guess what? Kirk and Todd have washed a lot of cars while they've been growing up. <laughs> Mr. Sane had some health problems in 1983, and he had to retire. That's when he came in one day and after that, and, and, and when he learned he'd had some health issues, and he came in, and he said, Danny, <clears throat> you need to go to the bank and start uh, working on getting a loan to buy the dealership. <laughs> and Gail and I were 33 years old and scared to death. After closing the loan on a Friday afternoon, I told Gail, I said, the best I can tell, Gail, we have to make $127 a day to make the payment. <laughs> and so the next morning, the Saturday morning, I went to work, and, and uh, at that time, we had the small dealership, and we, we did everything. I worked the parts department, and I sold the, the trucks, and Gail did the paperwork. And, and so <clears throat> that morning, uh, we didn't have anybody come in and want to ask about a truck. But anyway, somebody come in and bought a few spark plugs, a few parts, and I got a little concerned, so about... 10.30, I got a phone call from a man from Caraway, Arkansas. He said, I need a, a rear end parts for 1976 GMC. I, need, I said, well, sir, what do you need? He said, I need it all. I need a rear end housing, axles, ring gear, and pin. And I, at that time, I, I said, we got it all. We have it all, sir. He said, how long are you going to be open? I said, just as long as you need me to be. <laughs> so after he left about 1.30, I called Gail. I said, Gail, we made our payment. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Singh was not only my father-in-law, but he was a very close friend. And after he retired, he came down, oh, probably after the first year, he came down to the dealership one day, and I had the lot that's full of trucks. He said, Danny, what are you going to do with all these trucks? I said, well, Glenn, I hope I sell them. But if I don't sell them, at least my name's on that sign. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Singh passed away in 1987 at the age of 61. Wallace and Dana Fowler bought the bank of Rector in, I think, about 88. And then and, uh, and Mr. Fowler asked me to serve on the bank board. And I said, Mr. Fowler, I don't know anything about the banking business other than borrow money and work my tail to try to pay it back. He said, you're just the kind of guy I'm looking for. <laughs> so in 89, I'd, I, I was kind of wanted to try to find another dealership. And so I'd, uh, the Kennett, Missouri dealership came up for sale. And I called Mr. Fowler. And I said, told him what was going on, and I said, I'll get the details and look at it and call you and see what you think about it. And he said, Danny, I don't know anything about the car business. I'm a banker. You look at it. If it'll work, you write the check, and I'll cover it. So that's how that worked. And so we bought the Kennett dealership in 1989. In 1999, we bought Perkins, uh, Harold Perkins dealership, the Pontiac Buick GMC dealership, and consolidated those stores. 2005, the Ford dealership, Pinnell Ford in Paragool, and 2007, Horner Motor Company, the the Buick uh, Cadillac GMC store, then 2010, Tom Kirk, Chevrolet, and we can sell those, those stores. We've been very blessed and fortunate to accomplish what we have. I've never taken credit for being a real smart businessman, but I've taken credit for choosing good people, and we have the best people in the business. I have a saying that our people hear me say at every company Christmas party, you never go wrong being nice to people. My family employees have heard me say that many times. When you've been in this business, you hear a lot of stories, and you have a lot of stories, and I'm going to share a couple of stories with you, and then I'm going to close. Uh, these are old stories, and some of my best ones I've told throughout the years at different times. And, and if, you're, if you're younger, you can't relate to this like it's older folks, but I had a customer, and he had a farm truck pickup, stick shift. That's what he used on the farm all the time, but he had a new pickup that he used you know, on the weekends or whatever. And, and he got up that, that one morning, and he, his, his stick shift farm truck pickup wouldn't start. Well, his wife worked at the bank. She didn't have, she'd never been around the farm, but she, she was inside getting ready to go to work. And he said, before you go to work, I need you to come out and help me get my farm truck started, and I'm going to get you to push me with my new truck. And she said, okay. So she got out, and he said, uh, just get in the truck. He said, you need to get probably about 15 mile an hour to get it started. He said, so I got in my truck, and he said, I looked in my mirror, and he said, here she comes. <laughs> And he said, I knew what was going to happen. I just grabbed the steering wheel and hung on. <clears throat> I've got a lot of stories like that, but I'm not going to get away. One more, a letter here I'm going to read to you real fast. I got this letter in the mail, the Kennett dealership in 1997. And I've kept it all this time. I've got a lot of mileage out of this. And it was addressed to Glenn St. Chevy Olds, Kennett, Missouri. No zip code, nothing personal. And it's from Norma Hufford from Gideon, Missouri. Dear Sir, I am writing concern you hit follow this because it kind of goes different directions. <laughs> I am writing concerning my car, the Chevrolet Caprice Classic, white, 85 mile, I got last August. I had got a letter stating I had marked on my application that I had a health problem that kept me from being insured. <clears throat> I put it up and ran across it, and I don't know of a health problem that would cause me not to be insured. As of 1st of June, we have been separated, and do, and I've made all the payments on my car. And he, Truman, said if I wanted a divorce, he'd sign the papers. So I've seen a lawyer, Hill, Fiker, and Ladd, and our divorce will be final July the 9th. I told Mrs. Ladd, as I remember, that the car is mine, that his name was on it because our income was combined to finance it, and that he has a 79 Chevy pickup. I want his name taken off now. He signed the divorce papers. He got the new colored TV with remote, with rotor. <laughs> he got the new refrigerator we had. He got my stereo. <laughs> I got my bed and Chester drawers <laughs> and personal things. He got my ceiling fan I bought when we separated before. <laughs> I don't want no ugly argument. I just want his name, Truman Huffer's name, off of this car. I will continue as I have to make payments. Would you let me know by return mail? I don't have a phone. Sincerely, Norma Hufford. <laughs> uh, our family enjoys giving back because we remember how we started. 
we picked cotton. Well, I did back when I was younger. And Daryl, I know, I don't know about Roy, but Daryl was raised in the, in, in the same area. We had to split term. We picked cotton to help buy our school clothes and things like that. But uh, we do remember those kind of days. And Gail and I have a favorite Bible verse from Luke that says, To whom much is given, much is required. Thank you very much for this honor. It's very special. And God bless our troops. Thank you.